good morning, Trinity here. Today we are going to be canning just easy corn. I am trying to clear out my freezer and I have some frozen corn here. Um, I bought this from Azure Standard in 10, I bought it in 10 pound quantity and it came in these two five pound um, bags. Uh, this has been in my freezer a while and I'm trying to clear out my freezer to make room for other things. So today we're gonna be canning this. Um, I already canned the other one. Um, that's just an easier way for me and my husband to use it. Um, just because I don't want it to go freezer burnt or anything. Um, but, so we'll be canning this. I canned it in pints last time and today I'm gonna be canning it in quarts. Um, I have seven jars here. Um, I have five quarts and then this is a pint and a half size jar. I don't know if I'm going to be using all of them, but I just got them all out just in case. And let's get started. So pints are a little bit better for, this is not a pint, this is a quart. Um, me and my husband, it's just more a uh, good size for us, just for the two of us. Um, but today I'm going to be doing quarts because I don't have a lot of pints at the moment and I'm saving those pints for something else. Um, and then, so this would probably be about two meals for just me and my husband. Um, but usually when I open a jar, I'll figure out meals to make. So the first step I'm going to do, um, I'm going to be doing like the raw pack method, which, uh, so not the, so everything's going to be cold to start out with. I'm not using any hot water or anything. I'm gonna dump my bag of corn in the bowl, and I'm gonna just try to get some of the ice crystals off of it to make it more room temperature. And I am gonna be putting some warm water over this, but since it's frozen, it's gonna make it more room temperature, but I'm gonna be draining the water out, so. Just some warm tap water. So just get this kind of unfrozen so I can pack it in my jars. Um, this is a good, easy, beginner pressure canner recipe. I'll be following, I have an all-American pressure canner, and I follow for just simple, like just corn or simple beans. I always follow the instructions out of the all-American pressure canner book that came with the canner. Um, so today we're just gonna be doing corn in quarts for 85 minutes. If you see all those uh, right there, if you see all those, those are jars of beans. That video should have already come out, so um, I'll link it here, here or down there for you if you wanna watch. Just an easy pinto bean can pressure canning recipe. I have my strainer here and I'm going to strain the water out of corn. Um, it's pretty quick to get them down to room temperature, so. When doing the raw pack method, you want everything to be cold. So your jars need to be like just room temperature, cold, your corn needs to be, your water needs to be, and the water in your canner needs to be. Nothing needs to be, can be hot. Um, if you wanna do the hot pack method, then your jars will need to be hot, your corn, your liquid, everything, your canner. Um, you just don't want the jars to crack, that prevents cracking. Sorry about the mess back here, but we're gonna keep going. You're going to fill, I think we're only gonna get five jars today, which is maybe even four, I have no idea. We're gonna fill these to about to the curve of the jar. So about to the little curve, and we're gonna put the water to that first, that first ring on the jar, about one inch. One inch is about a little below this part, um, but I like to leave a little bit of room because I want the water to be above my corn. Let me go see what my dogs are working at. So I really like buying stuff like this from 
Azure. Um, if I can't grow it in my garden, I'm good enough to can. Um, I just like being able to can my own food and know what goes in it. Uh, you can't add salt, which I did to my last candy batch of corn, but I think these ones I'm gonna leave unsalted. Uh, it's just only if you want. So if you were to add salt, the instructions say to add one teaspoon salt per quart jar. So for quarts, you do that. Um, so actually, I don't even think we're gonna get five. We're gonna get four. So that's okay. So always check the rims of your jars. Just make sure there's no cracks or anything. You want the best seal possible. We are going to add have some filtered water here. We're going to fill to the first, about one inch head space. Then we're gonna take our debubbling tool and we are going to get all of the bubbles out. Well, as many as you can. Then you take your vinegar water on your rag and just wipe the rims. Make sure everything's clean. With stuff like this, it stays pretty clean, but if you were doing like something with tomato sauce, it would get pretty dirty. Okay, put our lids on. I am canning in the bigger sizes too, just because I kinda wanna save on some lids if I can. And then you just do your bands and we're gonna do it fingertip tight. So when it stops, just like, when the jar spins, I like to go just a little bit tighter than that. Okay, and now we're going to put these in our pulp canner for 85 minutes once it comes up to pressure. Okay, and I do have a rack in the bottom of this. Um, here, I'll show you in a second. And show you what this looks like. So there is a rack down in there. I think you can see that. Um, if you were doing uh, pints, you would, and you were double stacking, you would add the second rack that comes with the canner on top of the pints. You can't, I can't double stack quarts in my, uh, canner. And then on this canner, it has a little arrow and then an indent in the canner and you just want those to line up. Um, and then I just try to make sure on the side, the crack here on the sides is everything's even. Make sure there's no seepage during the canning process or air leaks, I guess I should say. And then you're gonna tighten these down at the same time. I have never canned with a Presto canner. I've had this since the beginning. So I have no idea how those canners work. I've seen a lot of people use them. They seem a little different than this, but so then just make sure all of them are tight, center on the stove, and then we're gonna turn on our burner. So what's gonna happen is this is gonna come up to pressure this little vent right here is going to vent for um, a good steady stream for about 10 minutes. Then I'm gonna put my weight on, which is this guy. And um, I'm at 10 pounds of pressure. Um, and then we're gonna, once this vents for 10 minutes, um, and I'll bring you back when this is venting and I'll show you but um, we're gonna put our weight on and then this is gonna come up to pressure. And once it gets up to pressure, we are going to cook for 85 minutes. I'm hoping you can see this. We got a pretty steady stream coming out and I'm gonna set my timer for 10 minutes. Um, and then we're gonna put the weight on. So let that vent to get all the air out and then we'll put the weight on. And I'll bring you back when I do that. Okay, we've been venting for 10 minutes and we're gonna put our weight on. I always like to use like a hot pad or a towel to help me get on. And for my altitude, we're gonna put it on the 10. Hopefully you can see that. 
I don't know. And just so you don't scald yourself, make sure you use a towel or hot pad. And we're just gonna put that on there. And now that that's on that, the gauge is gonna come up to 10 pounds of pressure. And once it gets up to 10 pounds of pressure, we're gonna set our timer for 85 minutes. Okay. So my canner just got to 10 pounds of pressure and I'm going to set my timer for uh, 85 minutes for the quart of corn. So you want to, at this point, you want to just make sure your thing's rattling about four times a minute. I'm, I, and I also make sure the gauge stays up to 10 pounds of pressure. So um, you don't really want a constant rattle, so I'll just adjust my heat to get about four rattles a minute, which on my stove is about a medium, um, medium, in between a medium and a low. So we'll just get this down to, you want to hear it stop every once in a while. So I will bring you guys back when I'm pulling this out of the canner. I'll see you in 85 minutes. So I just pulled these out of the canner and it looks like all of them have already sealed except maybe one still bubbling and everything. So um, yeah, I had a little bit of seepage, which means like the water came out during the canning process. Um, anyways, I try to go heat everything up slow and release pressure slow. So I'm not sure what I did wrong there, but yeah. This was um, really nice to get these in jarred up and out of my freezer. I have been cleaning out the freezer and um, I am working on a chili recipe right now. So that will be the next video that comes out and I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.